Hi, we're Swag Vintage AZ. We're going to go thrifting today in wonderful, amazing Anthem, Arizona. If you love our stuff, I hope you do. We are on Etsy where we list some of the things we find and we post about all of those listings on Instagram. So that's the best way to keep up to date with us. And we are also at the Brass Armadillo in Phoenix. If you happen to live in Phoenix, Arizona, it is the location in what they say is North Phoenix. So that's going to be on the I-17 and Cactus Road. We are booth P2, which is in the parlor, a sort of side gallery off the main mall. So come check us out. Um, a lot of our stuff is ending up there these days because our booth sells really well. So please visit us. Okay, so my first stop on this trip was the purses. And if you've been watching me for a while, I'm always looking for little vintage handbags. They typically end up in the booth and I sell them for, I don't know, $15, maybe 20 if it's a really good one. So here I picked one up. I liked the shape, but it was a contemporary piece. So I set it back. And as I move along, kind of getting to the end here, another interesting shape, but you know, that brushed kind of silver finished dead giveaway that it's most likely a newer piece. And then here are the bins. Now I'm not much of a rummager, typically speaking. I think these kind of gross me out because there's a lot of makeup bags and I don't know, sometimes I get worried about leftover powder whatever it's just a hang up i have so moving along into the blankets and i always love to check for something exactly like this which is a beautiful handmade most likely vintage i'm just basing that on the colors but it's definitely in a vintage style and i believe this one is crocheted because of the shape of kind of like those little rosettes i love the colors on this it was in really good condition i went ahead and spread it all out to take a look and make sure that there were no stains no gross weird sticky things and it was in immaculate condition so i definitely picked that one up so i decided to keep hunting in the blanket section but there was nothing on the other side of that rack so here we are in the baggies and what do i find some fabric that's not very exciting so i left that and moving into there's always a lot of patterns at this particular store and what am i looking at here oh yarn okay i remember what happened now I found a nice bag of new yarn for $3.50. You really can't beat the price here. So my little child at home is kind of an on again, off again knitter. So I went ahead and picked her up some skeins. That's what it's called. Those yarn balls and yarn elongated oval shape. It's a skein. Okay, I'm looking in suitcases this time. Of course, maybe for something vintage, but we were getting ready to travel. We were taking the dog with us and someone in my family was like, the dog should have a suitcase. And I was like, well, that's a great idea. So here I was looking for maybe like a mid-sized rolly pack I could bring along with us. This one looked really promising. It was about the same size that I wanted, but it was a little kind of too many pockets. Like I needed it to be pretty simple but I was thoroughly checking that one out nonetheless. And then bing bong, here we go. This one looked to be vintage or at the very least in a vintage style. Uh, the tag looked old, but the problem was it, I think the price was a little high. Did I see that right? I think it was like $25. So not enough of a margin for me. So here I am looking at the dog one and that one's $25. So. I didn't want to spend that much on a dog's suitcase, so I left it and moved along. But the search continues. Speaking of continued searches, another blanket section, and I find this really great chevron pattern knitted or crocheted. Hmm. I wonder. How do you tell the difference? Tell me in the comments. Anyway, this had some really great colors, very nice greens and blues in a really pretty kind of wintry but also I don't know it sort of reminds me of like under the sea color scheme 
and it had the cute tassels on the edges. So I went ahead and picked that one up as well, even though I do already have some Afghans for sale in my shop and in the booth. That one was just too good to pass up. And then look in here. Woof. Okay. So <laughs> I do love a homemade Afghan, but these colors, it was like using the end of the scraps of your skeins, I think. I really wish it would have worked out better because I think like a cool random one would have been great, but it just did not look good to me. So passed on that. Then I saw peeking out just a little bit and oh, look, oh, this one is so good. These colors are so fabulous. It's the perfect balance of a dark brown into chocolate. Then we get this really great peach and a bright, bright coral and then this green stripe throughout. I mean, like, what a great find. The drawback here was that this thing was $12.50, which is kind of steep, but I'm like, hey, am I a vintage reseller or am I a vintage reseller? Like, let's get this thing. This one had a big old hole in it and uh, definitely was not worth picking up. And then I'm just kind of poking along Honorable mention, shout out to all the Mexican blankets in the world. They're the handiest thing to have in a house. I didn't pick these up because red is not in my house color scheme, although apparently 2024 is supposed to be the year of red things. I have a bunch of black and white ones. I use them on everything. I use them functionally for warmth. I use them as like a repeated color scheme throughout the house. They're the best. So here I am in mugs, checking things out. This looks like a cute San Diego vintage mug, but I set it back because it was a little specific and not quite the vibe I wanted. I liked this one, though it was for number one, Abuelito. What is, um, is that a grandchild? Little grandpa? Anyway, cute, but I left that one. Then moving through, this is the one that I really had an interest in. It looks like it's handmade and it was stamped with our wonderful City of Phoenix logo of the Phoenix bird. So I thought that was super cool and it was in a great vintage style, only $1.50, unsigned, which is the only bummer about it, but... I went ahead and grabbed that. And plus I had all of these squishy blankets to put delicate things on. So that was kind of a nice perk of finding all those blankets because I was not afraid to add breakables to my cart. Here we are with a postmodern ball stem martini glass. These sell really well. Um, I don't have an explanation for it. They're cool, but they're not totally my style, but man, do they sell. This one was really weird because usually that ball stem is blown glass in like colored glass, but this one, it was flashed on and it was peeling off. So I left that one behind. I think it might've been like a cheaper reproduction, you know, that maybe that person had in their collection because the original one broke. It was a slightly different shape. So that's something to watch out for now that I know, um, I assume. Oh, look, I made a friend admiring those Afghans. All right, here we are back into the dish shelves or into the dish shelves for the first time rather and found an unremarkable piece of studio pottery which by the way i was watching a youtube video of another reseller and they were like studio potter's not selling blah 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 and i kind of agree when i first started about a year ago i picked up studio pottery a lot and it sold pretty well but i haven't sold a piece in a while so i don't know what do you guys think tell me in the comments like should i pick keep picking them up or has that ship sailed so that platter was kind of country home here's of course it's a candlestick holder i gotta check it out it's new so i set it away then just checking out these plates i didn't see anything else that looked remarkable kind of a bare shelf day at this particular goodwill this looked slightly interesting kind of pretty with the gold and silver 
But again, as I've mentioned 8,000 times, I usually just look at dishware for fun because rarely am I picking up dishware these days. I have a lot of it listed in my shop for sale. Some really cool pieces that just haven't moved yet. So I'm going to hold off for now. I liked this photograph of a beautiful Rocky Canyon wall. I couldn't quite place exactly where that was. In Arizona, it could kind of be anywhere. It didn't quite look like Sedona, just because I'm really familiar with the rock formations there and the white and just kind of pale pink stripes looked like a different part of the Southwest, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Here's a nice original piece. I really liked it. It was very, um, I don't know, 90s, but it didn't have a signature. It was an original piece. And sadly, I didn't like the matting. I just thought that the matting really killed it, that I didn't think it would sell or translate into people's homes right now in my local area at least i think probably some other places in the u.s that would have been a really great find with even with that matting and maybe even especially because of that matting anyway looking through here not really finding anything remarkable in the big arts and i'm about to move away from that section into odds and ends kitchen there's a little pier one owl which i left <laughs> and some salt and pepper shakers jars random things it's not often that i find goodies in that particular area this i considered bringing home for a second just because the one that i have at home is not in great shape kind of regretting I probably should have picked this one up it's really pretty I love the clear glass not vintage in any way but like just plain enough where it could like really make the cake look good but I left it regrettably then again I have one that works perfectly fine it's just not my favorite so maybe I made the right call there I don't know stuff stuff is a problem sometimes says a vintage reseller that was a cute little cup that I picked up. I liked the foot of it, but there was only one. Here are some really nice tall glasses. Loved the cut uh, pieces on the side. And there I am dinging it. I think it was crystal. But when I took a closer look at the rest of them, that gold rim had some gold loss on one of them. And I felt like mm, not quite worth it, especially if you're always trying. I'm always trying to get at least a set of four of glassware. Then here was a really pretty vase. I loved the shape to it, but it had that big old chip on the bottom, so I couldn't get it. Moving into some of the silver and more crystal. And this clearly had a clock inside of it at one point. I was just kind of curious about it, so I had to check it out and into some pots and things. Again, another piece of studio pottery that I looked at, I guess out of habit now, but am I giving up studio pottery? I don't know. This one was nicely done, but I left it for all the reasons stated before. Fake plant area. I have found a lot of Hager pots with fake plants shoved in them, so it's always worth a peek. And then here I saw two candlestick holders in that kind of style of the one that I saw before. So now I'm gonna turbo zoom walk over. That's, that's my normal walking speed, by the way. <laughs> I slow things down when I'm filming. And here I put them all together. Another time I'm thrifting and I'm showing off what a good person I am. I mean, if you're following me, you must think I'm just a saint at this point. Anyway, looking in the larger kind of metal pieces, wine racks, just making sure I do a real thorough look up, look down, and I spotted something. I think it's in that middle rack. There I go. So this is a wrought iron piece. At the time, I was really oddly attracted to it. It's kind of out of my norm, but I'm seeing a lot of these pop up on Instagram from other resellers. People are calling them mid-century. They always looked kind of 90s to me, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know what the mid-century history is of wrought iron pieces, but I went ahead and put that in the cart. 
And after I looked it up, the same exact piece is for sale in a couple other places for like $60. So pretty good pickup, I'd say. This was a beautiful wooden box and look at the inside. It was the glass lining on the bottom was still intact. The, the velvet looked really good. And initially I thought this was like wood inlay, but it's actually an overlay of like a thick cut textured paper. So very, very pretty. I love the colors and that one already sold everybody. So I think I made maybe $20 off of that. So that was pretty exciting. And again, for all of our most recent postings online, follow us on Instagram because anytime I post anything, on Etsy, I do an Instagram post as well. And what, what do you know? Look at this. Another shell. Why can't I remember the name? It starts with a C. I will maybe edit that in. Cowery It's shell. not a puka shell. But another bowl. I had a vase that sold in the booth. I had a wall hanging that is now in the booth. And now I have that bowl that's going to be in the booth. So we'll see if any of those sell, but I just keep finding them. It's very interesting. Then I'm looking in vases. Do I see anything? I don't think so. And now into kind of the smaller frame arts and I see this poking out from the side, really beautiful vintage. It's not brass, it's a different metal. It's much more delicate. I mean, maybe even tin, like a pressed cut tin. I thought this was a wonderful frame. The back, the uh, backing footing lean to thingamajig on the back was broken. So I went ahead and put that in the booth. I think it still has potential for someone to display something beautiful inside of it. So, and I think it already sold actually like the next day after we put it in the booth. So hooray for that. All right, moving into electronics not really a big win aisle for me typically in sports equipment but every once in a while something random is in there of course i gotta look at the lamps and these oh, were stunning and now you're gonna hear me regret not getting them they were a little bit banged up and so there was some paint loss on the side but this kind of ethereal milky creamy glass with the gold painted pattern was just so so pretty i loved the textured brass bottom but i left them i even took a picture of them and sent them to my booth partner and he was like get them get them get them and i didn't so goodbye lamps i hope they ended up in someone's house beautifully displayed this I also liked. I love this art deco kind of vibe to this brass lamp. But that neck was kind of a turnoff for me, that like creamy kind of plastic. But look, there's a matching one back there. So probably with like a really cool shade, those would have been great. But at $12.50 each, it's a little steep. So I left those behind. I wish lamps were faster sellers because this is a good one too. I love that shape and the, like the feet on the bottom. So cool. So if I had my way, I would have picked up five lamps that night, but it takes a while to sell a lamp. So I can't pick up five lamps. <laughs> I still have the 10 from that big haul I had uh, several months ago. Okay. Now I'm just checking out furniture for fun. I'm really, at this point, I'm trying to just learn more about solid construction of furniture. So I'm checking to see if they have the dovetail construction on the sides or fitting on the sides of the drawers. I liked this little, little guy, really banged up, but there was something about the top that I thought was really cute. So I'm just kind of checking it out. I do enjoy end tables. I use them like crazy in my house. I mean, there's not a couch, you can't just stick an end table on the side of it and use it, you know, for drinks and whatnot. Here I found this chest and my husband told me that he'd like for me to find a chest for us to store things. This one was really pretty. I loved that it had a cushion on the top, but hello, 150 smackers. No way. I am at a thrift store and it's not that cute. So we left this one behind. Plus it wasn't cedar as far as I can tell. So 
uh, and that was a specific requirement for anything that I picked up. And that was also like a vinyl top. It wasn't even like a leather. So not, not worth 150 in my opinion. So here I'm just, <laughs> I saw this shop vac for 30 bucks and I thought, dang it, someone should pick that up. Cause we have a shop vac at our house and we use it all the time. It's like one of the handiest things you could have in a house. They do take up a lot of space. So, but if you have a garage and you can store that thing, like pick one up. Those things are awesome. They clean everything. All right. Moving through furniture, just typical kind of castaway chairs and whatnot, fake flowers. And this trip, I'm looking in books and I found some really brand new Harry Potter books. And I do have a family member who is in the Harry Potter reading phase. So far, we've just been relying on, you know, very newer issue paperbacks. This one is not like anything to scream about. Initially, I was like, it said like first edition, but then I educated myself on what first edition for Harry Potter really is all about. So I'll be checking probably every book section from now on trying to find one of those highly coveted first edition printings. This one, however, was it like a, I don't know, like a 50th run or something. So, but they were in such great shape. They were brand new, never cracked open, still had their sleeves, dust covers on them. So I decided to grab those for our home collection to have a nice set. Hopefully I can complete someday for us to have since uh, we are enjoying those books right now. So that is the cart so far. Here are a couple still shots of it. Just a review of all of the great things that I found. I thought that was a really successful trip. Almost a full cart. And those three Afghans are super cool. Then right before the register, I found these reproduction vintage tees. Okay, I just went to an estate sale and just wanted to do a really quick haul video. This is a beautiful, I'm in the back of my car, jumper cables, those are here always. Uh, this is a really beautiful marble lamp, which now I'm realizing I did not test it, but that's okay. And I got this one for $22, which is a little pricey, but I think I'm going to keep this one. So then I found this beautiful vintage clutch with nice detail. It was 50% off today. And the clasp works on that. I'm just one-handed. Here is a nice little leather pouch. I got that for $1.50. This is, was a $1 brass piece and a $2 brass piece. And then this I think was probably the biggest score. This really cool studio pottery. Looks like three cats and a mouse. It's not signed, at least whether I can find, but I'm gonna look really close for a signature and maybe I can find that. I got that for $7.50. And after that estate sale, I couldn't help it. I had to stop at another Goodwill on the way home, which is my favorite way to source. And on this trip, I found a cedar chest. It has a really beautiful wood inlay, bunch of cedar chips in there for our convenience. And it did have a little damage on the corner, but very beautiful piece. So I picked that one up and it was $14. So not a bad score there. My husband was really happy, except that he said it was too big. So now it's in the garage. I don't know if we're going to use it or not, but it was a $15 or $14 risk. I can handle that. Okay, so into the mugs, I saw this London Bridge, Lake Havasu, Arizona mug. And this is really such an oddity that we have in our state. So according to the mug, in 1962, the London Bridge was actually falling down. So they deconstructed it and hauled it brick by brick to Lake Havasu, Arizona, and they rebuilt it and it was finished by 1971. So if you want to see the London Bridge, come to Arizona. I have never seen it. It's several hours away from my house, but maybe I should. So anyway, I picked that up. It's a really funky piece of history on a mug. Here's a nice amber glass. 
that I was hoping to find a match for, but I did not. So sadly, I didn't get to pick that one up. So it went back on the shelf. Pretty little thing though. This in is also made in colored glass. And I think that that is something that people resell. I just don't know what it is. If you know, let me know in the comments. They had a bunch of them in clear glass, but I didn't think that would sell. This was, oh, it had to be from the 80s, don't you think? Like, you know, late 80s, early 90s. However, not quite my vibe, so I let that one go. And then I always check anything out with a little bit of gold. This was pretty, but it was not in the best condition, so we left that. There's an interesting martini glass, but not quite interesting enough. And we had to move on. Oh, I, I'm just picking up all kinds of stuff that day. I guess I liked the shape of that. What's this one? Mm, oh, it's another match to that one. I don't know. I just didn't feel like that one was pretty enough to really pick up and resell. I always check out the amber glass. That's a cool one. Wish there were more of those, but there weren't, so I left it. And shot glasses. I never even look at the shot glasses, should I? I don't know. I feel like they're very college era kind of item. And that's not a bad thing. Maybe I have college era customers. I should include them in my picking. Anyway, moving along, I love these coupes. I love the shape. I love the stem. I have them at my, in my own collection. I don't know the history at all. I just think they're really super cool. And look, here's another uh, glass with like those little balls along the feet. Really cute. So I want to look into those maybe. But again, clear glass is so risky. It's really hard to resell it. So unless I want to bring it home, I usually don't pick it up. And look at this little thing. Big thing, chubby thing, so cute. At $6.50, not bad for this one. I actually really agonized over it for some reason, but with time, I have grown to really appreciate this piece. I think it is so mid-century. It is a mix between that classic Greek horse design of the designer. I can't remember right now. Maybe I'll just put it in the description. It's on my Instagram page with a little more research of like these two artists that I feel influenced that where there's the Greek horse plus this heavy bellied horse. So cool. It was finished in like a champagne gold that is listed in my Etsy shop. And I think I'm asking for around 65 for it because I could not find anything else like it anywhere else on the web. So very special piece. And here, I think these are really popular right now. They're not quite my aesthetic. This had a signature on it, but look, a massive crack that had been repaired. I think it would have been a really great find. I know that that Delft pattern in the blue and white traditional look is kind of hot right now. So too bad with the damage on that one. It would have been a great piece. Here's a nice little terracotta tortoise. Very, very cute. But I guess I could have put that one in the booth, though. Uh, you know, it wasn't like a hot one for me. Here's a nice conch shell. I like these, but they don't really sell. And I like them, but it's not like I would decorate my house with them. So I guess I can't blame other people for not buying them and putting them in their homes. But I think they're cool. And here was a piece of art glass that may have been broken. What else do we have? Oh, hey, here is a very cool vintage print signed, but it wasn't like a signed limited edition. I think that the signature was even printed on, but in a really nice circ or oval, plastic frame that looked like wood just a real classic piece and I loved that mountain lion kind of quietly observing right before it starts to stalk I mean it's just a really cool gesture of that body so I thought it was a really great piece I have it hanging in my dining room right now <laughs> I might sell it someday but I'm enjoying it for now then just moving along into all of these odds and ends 
And then this is an interesting eggplant, I suppose. A little paint loss in there. And I couldn't, I didn't know, I could just couldn't really make heads or tails of it. I thought it was an interesting, cute kitchen piece. But we left that one. Okay, into the lamps where I, this time I did not have to express any regrets because there was nothing there. And then into the books again. So I found this Mark Twain collection and it had a little date on it, 1970, probably a gift at one point. And I thought, oh, well, you know, that's nice. And here's the whole set. So this could be very cool for some staging. I liked the colors and the stripes. And so then I was looking further in the books for any other vintage pieces. Always come across stray encyclopedias when you're looking in the books at a Goodwill. And as I'm scanning, what I'm looking for here are fabric edges with like a gold text that's usually a dead giveaway for a vintage book so here's a shakespeare book there it is same signature it looks like so this probably came from the same house a little faded um i set that one back not having a ton of luck with this particular area. So then I went on and these are kind of everywhere in thrift stores. And I thought, you know, there's such a variety of colors. I really like the shapes. Maybe I should grab a few for some staging. They're like Reader's Digest collections. And then I noticed this Minecraft book for uh, one of my family members who might also be obsessed with Minecraft. And I decided, hey, let's grab that one for sure. So that went in the cart. So on back to the books. So I found these three because a lot of the items that I stage are in kind of like that brown, 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 brown color scheme. So I thought, okay, let's get these for staging because I think those would look really cool. Then I'm moving into plastics, pet supplies, kind of a dud aisle if you ask me but you always gotta look and then past the baggies and kind of have my camera low here because it was a really really busy day it was the weekend so I didn't have a lot of space to navigate the store freely with a camera and I found this empty aisle in terms of empty of people so I went ahead and started filming here here was a nice little brass pot with ceramic handle and knob but it was severely damaged so we had to leave that behind and into the candles and candle holders i love this shelf in that aisle because i really have scored some cool stuff in here in the past this is one of my favorite goodwills to visit i was initially attracted to some of these, but they all turned out to be newer or unremarkable or just didn't have a match. So we went ahead and left those. So it was not a big score day in the candle aisle. I think I got interested in the shape back there. I'm kind of wishing I had picked up that double armed black one that was on that middle shelf, but oh well. I'm just curious about it now. Maybe I didn't see it that day. Anything in the back? Nope. There's a wrought iron piece, but I already have one that I picked up at the last thrift, as you saw, so I left it. Into the little art frames, and I don't remember finding anything there. What's this? Oh, it's kind of a sweet little, oh, it's a photograph of a quilt. <laughs> yeah, we can put that back. Good choice. What else is here? Nothing, nothing. But it's time to look in the wood aisle. This particular Goodwill always has a jam-packed and messy wood aisle. I have found some really great teak bowls in here, but most of everything in here today was like kind of the eat, pray, love, 
you know, Airbnb signage, which is totally legit. It's just not what I do. This was attached to something cool, but it's not attached to it anymore. So that was kind of a bummer, but I really liked the scalloped wood on the sides of that. Rolling pins. If you ever need a rolling pin, just come to a Goodwill. I'm always going to check out a wood bowl. I really, really liked this one. Target home. Haha. <laughs> Good job, Target. But it had cracks. Not quite the the color of wood that I usually pick up for my home. Very contemporary, but the cracks, I sent it back. Here's a really cool made in Italy. It was kind of like this lightweight plaster kind of material. I don't even know what it would have really been made out of, but I thought it was pretty made in Italy. So that went in the cart and look at that. A little brass bow, huh? Just poking out at me. Made in India, so that one went in. I think it was two dollars and fifty cents. So that was a definite yes. This I thought was a sweet little homemade piece. With, I mean, what would you put in there? <laughs> Don't answer that. All right, and then here is a nutcracker bowl where you would put the tools in the middle. Thank you, commenters, for educating me about that. Uh, it was in really good shape, but I don't know, do these sell, you know, I mean, like without their, uh, hardware, like the, the nutcracker that you can fit in the middle. So I left it. Um, typically when I see those, it says like Montana on the side of it. And that one was clean. So maybe I should have given it a try. I don't know. Here was just kind of an interesting marble top piece that I was curious about in the moment, but I'm no longer curious about it to tell the, the truth. Oh yeah, I gotta love these. The clock with the shellacked faded wood. Um, I picked one up in a video a while ago for, it was like a San Francisco piece. And initially I loved it, but the clock is broken. So now I have to like either repair the clock or just give it back to the Goodwill, which I think that's probably what I'm gonna do is just eat the cost on that because those clock repairs seemingly simple but they can get a little complicated with the fit of the hands and all of the hardware so I only do it for clocks that I really I'm either going to keep or I really really think it's worth it and here's just a plain old Jane vase don't really know why I picked that up but that's what you do when you're thrifting you gotta reach out and grab all the things that even make you mildly curious so it's part of the job what do I see here oh this is a pretty bowl though not pretty enough for me to bring home kind of in a British style here's a beautiful piece of pink glass and I know nothing about pink glass does it sell I don't know and it's all pink glass vintage. I don't know either. So if I don't know, I usually don't pick it up unless I just have a real strong feeling about it. There's some vintage, most likely Arizona Diamondbacks PJs or a shirt framed, interesting piece. And these are the larger art pieces. I have found some fabulous art at this Goodwill, but it was not in the cards for me that day. All right, heading on over to belts. Why not? I have in the past picked up tooled leather belts and anything tooled leather is a really good seller. I even had a tooled leather belt that said the name Barbara on it and that sold. So even if it's specific, I say go for it. I didn't find any that day. So here I am kind of inspecting there was a little chip on this horsey that I repaired with a little bit of gold paint that I have in my house so he's looking real good these days and I'm just kind of giving him a once over it's a real curious piece for me but it has grown on me big time especially after I did some research now I'm inspecting this one and tragically I find a big old repaired crack so I had to set that one back and here I am just making sure that all of those books look good. Now, 
into the blankets and textiles. That kind of caught my eye, but it was just printed onto a bag. Someday I'd love to find a real raunchy 70s shaggy wall hanging piece. So I always keep my eye out for something that looks in that style. But nothing was there today for that particular item. And here I'm just kind of checking out the tableware, anything that catches my eye. And here we have just an honorable mention. What a great couch that belonged to, huh? Oh my gosh. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much. See you later.